Hello, thank you for joining me in my study. We've been thinking together about the justice of God's punishing Christ for our sins. And we've seen that people charged that God so doing would be unjust on God's part. Now, I've already explained that if you adopt a consequentialist theory of justice, this objection is easy to meet. Uh, justification for Christ's punishment would be found in the great benefits to be derived from Christ's being punished for our sins and thereby saving us. But I also argue that the biblical view of justice is a retributive view. That is to say that the guilty are to be punished because they deserve punishment. And the question then will be whether God's punishing Christ in our place is consistent with retributive justice. Now, an assessment of this objection requires that it be contextualized within a broader theory about the ground and source of objective moral values and duties. When you read the classical defenders of the doctrine of the atonement, whether it be Saint Anselm or Francois Turretin or Hugo Grotius, all of them presupposed some sort of divine command theory of ethics, according to which moral duties are determined by God's commands, which are rooted in God's own personal nature. I've defended this view of divine ethics for wholly independent reasons in uh, philosophical foundations for a Christian worldview. On this view, there are no moral duties hanging over God as a sort of external standard to which he must obey. Rather, God's own commandments constitute what is right and wrong. And these commandments are reflective of God's very nature. God is by his very nature kind, compassionate, fair, and so forth. Now, since God presumably doesn't issue commands to himself to obey, what this view implies is that God literally has no moral duties. That means that God is free to do whatever he wants. God can do anything that he wants, and no one can complain that God has failed to discharge his moral obligations. All that is required is that what God does be consistent with his own nature. So I think there is a deep incoherence philosophically in the objection that God's punishing Christ for our sins is somehow unjust or immoral on God's part. Since God's own will and commands determine what is just or moral, it is logically incoherent to accuse God of doing something immoral or unjust, because whatever God does is, by definition, just and moral. At most, then, what the opponent of penal substitution would have to argue is that punishing Christ in our place would somehow be inconsistent with God's own nature. But then that's very difficult to justify, I think. It seems to me that God's sacrificing himself in the person of the Son to pay the penalty for sin that we deserve is perfectly consistent with God's holy and loving and compassionate nature. It is exactly the sort of thing that one would expect God to do. So as Hugo Grotius points out, even if God has commanded that the innocent should never be punished in human systems of justice. That is to say, God has decreed that for human beings to have criminal justice systems in which substitutionary punishment takes place, that in no way prevents God himself from taking upon himself the punishment for sin that we deserve because such an act would be wholly consistent with God's own divine nature.